I've got our November data table ready to go and show you all the great sets on the table. And at the end, I will give you my top three that I still want to pick up. And I'm going to try to narrow it to three that are still available and not already sold out because we are very close to the end of 2023. Hey everyone, welcome back to KDX Bricks Analytics. I am Kevin and it is time to get back to my bread and butter of going through an updated mentions and enthusiasm score table. This is what I do in most of my videos, but I haven't done one too recently because of all of the great Black Friday and Insider Weekend and Cyber Monday deals. And I wanted to do a bunch of videos on discounts and promos that you could get, things that I was interested in picking up and all of that good stuff. But with that behind us, I just finished watching all of the other Lego and investing and reselling YouTube videos for November 1st to 30th. It was 56 videos total across 11 channels and 512 Lego sets were mentioned. If you're new to my channel, I watch all of the other Lego investing and reselling videos so that you don't have to. And when I watch those videos, I record a bunch of data and tabulate it and present it to you here in my videos. Each time a YouTuber talks about a set, I record that as a mention. For each mention, I give it an enthusiasm score of 0, 1, 2, or three, three being that the presenter says this set is going to knock it out of the park on the secondary market, a two saying, hey, they think it's going to be a solid investment, a one, the presenter is saying that they are interested in it, they have some doubts, they have some questions, but it's one they want to look at, and then a zero is a set that the presenter is absolutely avoiding for investing and reselling purposes. All right, enough of my data table intro, even though it felt pretty good doing one of those since it's been a little while. But let's get into the first set, 75342, the Republic fighter tank. Of course, this is no surprise at all. It got 24 mentions in the last month and an enthusiasm score of 2.9, almost a top mark 3.0. Everybody has been talking about this set a ton so much that people are even worried that maybe it is too popular for investing and way over hoarded. I think there is some over hoarding, but I do not think it is too popular for investing. I still am very excited about this set. It is a Target exclusive $40. It was $25 for Black Friday week at Target and I was able to pick up 50 of them. It is very popular because of the purple detailed 187th clone troopers. You get two in the set plus one clone commander, Mace Windu with the arm printing that we've talked about a lot, and then a couple of droids. Pretty good shelf life at just over a year and a half. Two previous Republic fighter tanks have been released by Lego. The first one retired in 2008, a 583% growth, annual 10%. Of course, most of that was right after retirement and it slowed down recently. And then the one that retired in 2017 has a 317% annual growth. The two comparables certainly show all signs that the one that's retiring at the end of this year is going to do very, very well. I don't think we're going to be in the 300% growth range, but I can see this set in a couple of years getting up to $75. And if you picked up a bunch at $25, that's pretty good. Quick look at Camel 3X for most of its shelf life, third party party retailers were selling it between 50 and $55, which is above the $40 MSRP. Very good sign. Early in life, it was up into the low 60s. And then just recently, it dropped into the low 40s because of the $25 discount. But having a set already being sold over MSRP on Camel 3X is a very good sign. With all that said, unfortunately, it is already sold out on lego.com, but I have seen them still available in my local targets and on target.com. If you'd like to pick some up you got maybe a couple or a few more weeks next one on the table is 40623 battle of endor heroes 14 mentions enthusiasm score of 2.8 also outstanding 40 dollars for the five brickheads came out this year and also retiring at the end of this year so a very short shelf life of nine months and i did mean to point out the r in parentheses in front of the set number and name indicates that according to brick fanatics or brick set or the lego.com last chance list it is scheduled to retire at the end of this year. I think I have 13 of this one. First time we've got Wicket and R2-D2 in Brickheads and also first time for Lando. We've had Luke before. This one's kind of plain and we've had Leia before, but not in the green Endor robes. And a look at the other Star Wars Brickheads. This one just fits right in with the group. Soka Tano is another one we'll talk about soon. But the nice thing about this Battle of Endor Heroes set is that there are five characters in one box. And so that's about five of the approximately 
30 Star Wars brick heads that have been released today. So you can get a good chunk of Star Wars characters in one box and scrolling through here, most of them are doubled or tripled in value. Even less popular characters like Kylo Ren and Rey are even going up a little bit in value. So with all that said, I am a huge fan of this, hoping to get a few more if Lego discounts them again, or there is a really good gift with purchase right before the end of the year, but I am not planning on that. Third set on the table is the Luke Skywalker Red 5 Helmet 75327, 14 mentions, E score of 2.7, just over a year and a half shelf life, $70, fantastic looking helmet. Brickset says I have 11 of them, but I haven't done a great job of keeping my numbers completely accurate on Brickset, so it's in the ballpark, but I can't confirm if it's exactly 11. I've got that on my spreadsheet somewhere else. Looking on Brick Economy, the Star Wars helmets are all having annual growth rates of around 30%, even for the least popular one, the Scout Trooper. TIE Fighter Pilot is a unicorn still having 30% annual growth rates. Stormtrooper and even Boba Fett that had a really long shelf life in its first year, it has an 18% growth rate. The Star Wars helmet sub theme overall has about a 45% growth rate so far. I know this says 145%. That's incorrect. It's 45%. So all signs indicate that these helmets that are retiring in the near future, probably the end of 2024, are all likely to do very well. And just to show the popularity of this set, it's already sold out on Lego. It is available at some other retailers, but I don't think it will be around much longer. You might not get to the end of December with these still available. And fourth on our table is another helmet, 75343 Dark Trooper helmet, 13 mentions, E score of 2.8. That's amazing. This is not a popular looking set, but it's a very popular set for investing early in its life. It was really splitting the investing community. But now that all rumors are saying that Lego is not producing anymore for this sub theme. Investors are saying, hey, there's only 11 total in the sub theme and completionists will want all 11. And even though this one doesn't look that good, they will absolutely want it. And on top of it, this is a target exclusive. The TIE Fighter Pilot was also a target exclusive. This one won't do near as well as that one, but I think it'll still do very well. It was on sale in the Target store for $48 a couple of weeks ago and online for $55. The $70 MSRP for most of these helmets is just way too high, but we have been able to get them on on good discount. And then over here on Camel Camel Camel, third party sellers have been in the $75 to $80 range during most of its shelf life. And then just recently it's popped up to $120 and the buy box on Amazon is $120 right now. Not really sure what's going on with that. Seems like a very quick immediate jump after it is right near the end of retirement. But if there's some truth behind this, then that is certainly a good sign. Now a couple of Speed Champion sets, 76911, the James Bond Aston Martin DB5, and the Fast and Furious 1970 Dom's Charger, set 76912. Both have nine mentions with an enthusiasm score of 2.8. Both of them are just over a year shelf life, still at the $20 price point for the eight stud wide sets. And they are both licensed vehicles from major movie franchises, which everybody thinks is gonna help these sets out a lot. This one looks fantastic and they both have an exclusive minifigure this one the daniel craig james bond version and then over here dom's charger of course the exclusive dom minifigure very simple but looks great i do like it a lot speed champions just really continue to be evergreen sets the original eight stud wide sets are doing pretty well the 1985 audi 35 dollars nissan gtr 32 dollars the ferrari f8 32 dollars as always for speed champions when comparing the secondary market price to the MSRP, it's not great, but all speed champions are easily found for 20% off and sometimes even 30 or 40% off. Dom's charger was $14 during Black Friday at Target and the Aston Martin was $12. This is a very successful and lucrative theme for Lego and they are continuing to make more and the MSRP baseline prices are being pushed up by Lego, which they clearly think they can get people to pay that price. And I assume that's based on the popularity of these cars and this theme. So it'll be interesting to see where they go in the future, but already three new sets have been announced for 2024 and they all look great. Now on to another Star Wars helmet, 75351 Princess Leia Boosh helmet. Just came out in March of 23, probably will retire at the end of 24. Also $70, but this one has eight mentions. Very good so far, but a top mark of 3.0 for the E-score. I don't have any yet, but certainly through 2024, it is a set I am going to be watching closely 
nicely for great discounts and I'll be picking up as many as I can when it gets down into the low $40 range. And next up is another Star Wars Brickhead 40539 Ahsoka Tano 7 mentions with an e-score of 2.9. This set continues to be talked about a lot and very popular even though it has a two-year shelf life. Ahsoka's first season on Disney Plus was very good. Second season is coming out soon. She's going to have major roles in upcoming movies so her character is only going to increase in popularity. Brickset says I have 24 of these. I think it's closer to 30 and based on all the other Star Wars Brickheads that we looked at I am all in. Oh and don't forget my videos are for entertainment purposes only. I do not provide financial advice. You got to get that from somebody else. 40622 Disney 100 Celebration Brickhead 7 mentions e-score of 2.6 standard $40 a very short 11 month shelf life so that's really good and looking at previous Disney Brickheads they're all doing pretty well. Captain Jack is up to $35. Jack Skellington and Sally originally $20 up to $75. Minnie Mouse is $75. Mickey is $56. Little Mermaid $87. Frozen set is $35. Elsa is $28. So many good Disney sets and what I like about the Disney Hunter Celebration is the classic look that has actually turned a lot of people off the two characters that are black and white Oswald and Mickey but I think that's a nice throwback and will be a very nice touch and very desirable in a lot of people's collections in the future and I think people are missing out on this one a little bit right now and then Snow White and Tinkerbell look fantastic I do want to show that on lego.com this set is still available and still 40% off so it has not sold as well as lego had planned and remember it's been 30% off for a long time before the recent 40% off but yeah so the longer that it is available and on sale the more I think to myself it's going to be a long hold time on this set but still I think it's going to be worth it and right now I have five and I might get a few more oh nice let's talk about this set next this one I love seven mentions with an e-score of 2.6 it is the Millennium Falcon holiday diorama 40658 some investors despise this set and some really like it I am in the love it camp it is retiring at the end of this year brick set doesn't say that but it also isn't showing the date that it was released because it is so new it just came out a few months ago and in the modern Lego era a three or four month shelf life is really really short and almost unheard of and there's so much going on with this set for the $30 price point and during Black Friday it was 20% off at $24. Ray and Finn aren't the most popular characters but I like their Star Wars Christmas ugly sweaters. We've got BB-8 had a million of those. We also get a Chewie minifigure and a Porg but still, for $30, three minifigures, a droid, a little animal, and a lot of nice detail. A very good, packed, inviting diorama. And we'll talk about the other Star Wars dioramas later in this video. And I know this one doesn't quite fit in because it has a different base frame structure. But still, it'll look very nice as part of the diorama lineup. And I think people are going to wish they had picked this one up. And therefore, push the value up on the secondary market after it retires. A Minecraft brick head, the Llama. 40625 seven mentions with an e-score of 2.3 nine month shelf life as are the other two minecraft brickheads that we'll talk about in a minute and this one is the best of the three by far that llama is adorable nice color scheme really well designed nice print on the nose i have five actually think i have seven of them and it's had seven mentions which isn't bad for only nine months on the shelf so far but only a 2.3 enthusiasm score i think that's a little bit low and some people have been saying that they are skipping this set and I'm surprised because if we look at the only other Minecraft Brickhead set released to date which retired back in 2018 it has increased in value from $20 to over $100 it's Steve and Creeper and this one looks pretty good Steve is a nice build but pretty standard but that Creeper looks really nice so back to Llama I am definitely taking the risk on this set so cool so cool 75336 the Inquisitor Transport Scythe six mentions E score of 2.8 that is very 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 high especially this far down on the table where the mentions are getting lower year and a half shelf life a hundred dollars which seems a little expensive but four outstanding minifigures all four of them are exclusive the inquisitor third sister obi-wan and fifth brother and the ship itself is cool very menacing looking and very true to the source material a lot of interior space when you open it up the wings fold out into the other configuration looks great i've got about eight of these now and we've talked about this set 
at length in my previous video, so I'm not going to go into all the details. I don't have time to go into all the details on all the sets in this video. So some of them I'm going to deep dive as we get further down the table. I'm going to go into them less and less because I think they'll be less and less interesting or desirable for investing. But I'll give you what best I can and make this a pretty long video anyways. But I do want to show you real quick with the Inquisitor Transport Scythe on Camel 3X, third party sellers. It's been up to 120 or 130 later in its shelf life. And now recently it looks like it's jumping up to about $140. Of course, prices are a little higher on Amazon than they are on eBay or Facebook Marketplace, which is where I usually sell. But still, these numbers are a very good sign for this set. And now the two remaining Minecraft Brickheads, 40624 Alex and 40626 Zombie. Both of them six mentions and the same 2.3 enthusiasm score as Llama. Same story, both of these, although I like Llama better, I am in on these two, especially because it's a pain to buy a $10 set and then resell it. Maybe you get $15 after shipping and fees, and that's just not a lot of money per unit, so you have to sell a lot of units to make it worth it. Well, I'm going to just package these three together, sell it as a $30 set, basically, and hopefully get $90 out of it. So here's Alex, kind of plain, but does the job. And then Zombie, also kind of plain, but does the job. My kids actually have looked at this one a couple of times and keep on saying, ah, they don't like this one. I think it's okay, but it's not as good as the Creeper from a four or a Llama. 76956, T-Rex Breakout, six mentions, only an E-score of two. This is a Target exclusive, $100, just over a year and a half shelf life. And all four of these minifigures are exclusive, which is a great selling point. And they look good. I like the dirt on the kids and the sweat on the two adults. So really good minifigures. I think one of the drawbacks and concerns is that the dinosaur is not a mold. It's brick built. For my own collection, I actually like that. I have this set. Only about four copies. I plan on building one. And again, for myself, I like that the dinosaur is brick built. I'm not all into the molded dinosaurs. I know they're very collectible, but I just haven't gotten into those. I did want to show you Camel 3X. This is kind of interesting, but here we are on the table. This is December. And so just before December and up until today, it's showing $190 as third party reseller price. And the buy box is $190. I don't know if that's just a random spike that's not to last or if that is a really good sign to come. But if it's a good sign, then that is great for this set. And also on eBay, this set is selling for over the $100 MSRP uh, ship. So here's one $125 free shipping. And then here's one $91 with $15 of shipping. It is starting to creep over the MSRP. So I'm excited about this one. 76187 Venom, six mentions, an e-score of 1.5. I'm going to skip this set. I really thought about it for a while. It never really got to a super low price that I would have been interested in. And more and more, it seems like the superheroes, whether it's DC or Marvel sets, are just losing the buzz and harder and harder to resell. Maybe it's a little bit of the economy because reselling is slowing down in general. And maybe these sets are some of the first to fall off in terms of popularity. Unless this is half price, I'm going to be skipping out on this one. 75300, the Imperial TIE Fighter. Six mentions, only an E-score of 1.3. Long three-year shelf life, $45. I think it's very expensive. Two of the minifigures are exclusive, but I don't think they're that special. You've got the TIE Fighter pilot and the Stormtrooper. And sorry, I'm having a brain blip and I forgot. That's right, NIL-8, the protocol droid. So this one is exclusive and the Imperial TIE Fighter pilot. We've got this ship many times before and LEGO will continue to release future versions of this. For those reasons, I'm not picking it up. However, it was $25 for a few days at Walmart recently. And I know some folks that picked up a ton of them at the $25 price because if you can sell them for MSRP after shipping and fees, you just double your money. But I skipped out and went for other things. 75324, the Dark Trooper Attack. Six mentions also with an E-score of 2.3. Just over a year and a half shelf life. The MSRP of $35 on this set is crazy high. And I think for that reason, it is not very popular for investing and I think this one's going to be a little bit of a dark horse. I've been singing the praises of this set from the beginning but also saying you have to get it on a really good discount and Target had it for $18, $19 so I was able to pick up I think six of them at that price. I think I'm up to 10 now and I like this set for the minifigures but I also like it because it basically is another diorama and as you guys know I am very excited about all the dioramas. I'll take off this little action feature piece and just line it up with the other diorama sets and I think it's going to look good and people are going to they had it. And the other thing is that although the Dark Trooper is not exclusive, it's only in one other set. It's this one right here, which retired at the end of last year. There's only one Dark Trooper minifigure in this set. And this is in a $160 set. It's only increased to $175. Oh, it's the Imperial Light Cruiser, by the way, set 75315. And
And so people aren't gonna be coming after this set for that minifigure, they'll be coming after this one instead. 75334 Obi-Wan Kenobi versus Darth Vader, also six mentions, E score of 1.3. This one is not very popular for investing. $50 MSRP, but it's been 35 and then 25. And in that 25 to $35 range, I think it will get you an okay return. All four minifigures are exclusive. A lot of times when you have an exclusive Darth Vader, you do pretty well. Obi-Wan looks good. Captain Tala is pretty plain, but a good figure for the set. And then the main one we like is the Ned B loader droid. Can't get that anywhere else. But so far, I only have, that says one, I have two now. Our first idea set, the Medieval Blacksmith, five mentions, E score of 2.8. It's set 21325. $180, it did get the price bump from $150. Was that a year and a half ago now? Three year shelf life, but such a great set. I don't think there's anything more I can say about it that I haven't said before, but I will show you Camel 3X and it is in the 200 plus range. Prior, it was in the 275 range, it looks like. It did go on sale, so the price have come down. The bad news with this set is it is all sold out and I haven't seen it anywhere else and maybe you'll get lucky and find one in the wild. At this point, I think this set has phased into its secondary market life and it is off to the races in my opinion. Same thing with this set, 75330, the Dagobah Jedi training diorama, five mentions with an E score of 2.8 also. And this one too is sold out on lego.com. I did pick up a few more from Barnes and Noble the other day. They were having a really good deal. Great minifigures. A couple of them are exclusive. Great scene. A lot of nice detail. Just really sucks you into the action. Makes you feel a part of what's going on. And then of course that X-Wing wing or foil is sticking out of the swamp. Such a great touch. On Camel 3X, we can see the Amazon price has been as high as the $90 MSRP and as low as 57. I got to remember here I have, it says 10 on bricks. I think I'm up to 13 now. I was probably average about $60 for each of those. But if we look at the third party sellers, just recently it's starting to jump up above the MSRP. 75369, the Boba Fett mech. Also five mentions, each score of 2.8. $16 for these mechs just came out in August. They've already been on sale as low as $12. When everybody heard that Star Wars mechs were being made in Lego form, most people were not too excited about that. But this one is really good. The minifigure is a big part of the selling point. This Boba Fett minifigure has so much great detail. But the mech itself also looks good. And back to the main pose, I can see Boba Fett in a pose like that. And I could see Boba Fett actually having some sort of exoskeleton type equipment. So I'm okay with this one. I do like it for investing purposes. It is a lower price point. So I probably won't go in too deep unless there's a great deal. Talking about the minifigure, if you want to give yourself the best chance when it comes to minifigures going up in value, Boba Fett Fett is probably the best choice. Just look at the prices of these old Boba Fett minifigures, all in the $50 and $60 range. This one obviously is a special case, but here's the Boba Fett white minifigure for almost $400. Here's one for over $180. And then some of the recent ones are down at the $5 and $10 range. That's just because they haven't been on the secondary market too long yet. But remember, this set is not retiring yet. I don't know if it's on the 2024 retirement list. I haven't looked recently. And so until I know that it is expected to retire at the end of a year, then I'm not going to be picking any or many up. 75338, Ambush on Ferrex, five mentions with an enthusiasm score of 2.6, $70, way overpriced. We've talked about that a bunch, but it is a Target exclusive and it hasn't been discounted that heavily yet. I've only got mm, not one. I think I have three. And although I like this set, mostly because Andor was great and because it's the only Andor set that Lego has produced at this point, these three characters in the show are outstanding and they are equal outstanding in minifigure form. The ship is pretty accurate. There are multiple of this ship in the ambush scene, so maybe some diehard Andor fan would want to build an army of these ships. But with all that said, I've been saying that I think this one will be great as an investment if that price gets way down. I think it's been in the 50s range, but that's not low enough for me. I'd really like to see it at $40. I don't know if that'll happen or not. If it doesn't, then I'm just going to miss out. Another Star Wars 75292, the Razor Crest, five mentions, an E-score of 2.2. From season one of The Mandalorian, the build and the ship and the design is fantastic. The minifigures are good, but they are not that special. I don't think any of them are exclusive. Maybe one is. Oh, yeah, Grief Cargo's minifigure is exclusive, but even IG 11 is an exclusive and, I mean, awesome character. Not that great of a droid figure. Just over a thousand pieces for $140. Very expensive. Came out in 2020, so over.
over a three year shelf life. It has been on some pretty good discounts lately as it's being cleared off of retailer shelves and people have been scooping them up big time. But I have not, even though I have one and built it myself and I love season one of Mandalorian and I love this ship and everything that's in the box, I just am skipping this one for investing. I do want to point out that it is sold out on lego.com. The next diorama set, 75329, the Death Star Trench Run, $70, picked a few up for $35 from Target recently. I have five now. The same, just over a year and a half shelf life for the first wave of the three Star Wars dioramas. Five mentions, also e-score of 2.2. This one's just lower because it doesn't have a minifigure. And I think that will hurt it a little bit post-retirement, but getting them at $35, I think that we will be A-OK -okay at that price. I continue to believe that as the helmets get phased out, at least that's what it sounds like, that these dioramas are going to be next for doing very well as a consistent, solid Star Wars Lego investment. There's definitely been some hesitancy by the Lego investing community on the dioramas, and I think that's just because we don't have any comparables and we really don't know. But I believe Star Wars fans are really going to appreciate something that looks this elegant with the frame stand and the printed logo and quotes, and then the really exceptional advanced detail that the Lego designers put in each of the dioramas. 75309, the Republic gunship, large UCS, $400 set, five mentions, E score of two. At the $400 price, I wasn't interested, but it's been in the high 200s with promos and points. Some people have picked a bunch up and are excited about them. I'm just passing completely on this set. I'm sure at the lower price, it'll do pretty well, but it's not one that I am passionate about and not one that I want to sink a ton of money into when I think there is some risk with this set because it is kind of ugly, even though it is the first UCS gunship and most first UCS Star Wars sets do really well on the secondary market. 75312, Boba Fett Starship, five mentions, E score of 1.6. Same story for me as the TIE Fighter. Lego will continue to make a lot of these pretty long shelf life, expensive $50 price point. Even though it's Boba Fett, I am going to pass on this one. If you get it at the right price, it will still do decent as an investment, but I just think there are better Star Wars sets to aim my limited investing cash towards. 75326, Boba Fett's throne room. Same story with this one. Five mentions, E score of 1.2. $100 for 732 pieces. Just over a year and a half shelf life, which is pretty good, but very expensive. The build doesn't look great, but the minifigures are awesome. Six of the seven are unique, really good minifigures. The problem is that the show, Book of Boba Fett, wasn't that popular. I was only okay with it. I mean, I liked it. I enjoyed it, but I was only okay with it. And in terms of these characters, they weren't the most exciting characters in a Star Wars show. I think the minifigures will be a little less desirable too. Again, comparing to like the Inquisitor Transport Scythe, where that show also wasn't as popular, but those characters were awesome. Our next idea set 21326, Winnie the Pooh, four mentions, a top enthusiasm score of 3.0, $100 for the 1,265 pieces. And all five of these Winnie the Pooh classic characters in minifigure form are exclusive and they look awesome. The build is fantastic. It's complete all the way around. Substantial tree that Lego struggles with sometimes. It opens up in the back of the hut to give you some nice interior details that Lego really packed in there. A lot of good with this set. I have three and I was hoping to get a few more when Walmart put them on sale for 50% off, but they sold out in five minutes. With that said, I think it's going to be a little bit of a longer hold time. My hesitation is that the Sesame Street set that retired at the end of last year, so it's only been a year, is not doing great yet. It retailed for 120 of course. A lot of people got it at $89, as you should. We're looking at 140 150 ship for the 123 Sesame Street, and that hasn't jumped up a lot yet. So still excited about this one, but planning on a little longer hold time for myself. 10289, Bird of Paradise, the first of the botanical sets that are retiring at the end of this year. Four mentions, e-score of 2.3, Target exclusive, very expensive $100, but it was a 60 sometimes, but 70 or 80 pretty regularly. Two and a half year shelf life, not sure what to think too much about that yet. This is the least popular, it seems like, of the botanical sets, even though I think it looks great, but we don't really have any comparables yet because this is the first one to go. My hunch is that all of the botanical sets will do well, but I think they will be long hold times, which isn't necessarily too bad because flowers are going to be popular from now until the end of eternity. You know, as people start to forget about these sets and go on the secondary market to get them, I could see them getting a pretty good price, but that could take five plus years. And the reason I'm hesitant about that is because look at the sales velocity of these botanical sets on Amazon 
and I know I've showed this a few times now, but the numbers just keep going up as we get closer to Christmas. The new tiny plants that I don't think looks that good, actually. I wish the pots were not the main focal point when your eyes glance at it, because the plants are great, but the pots are too much. But still, 40,000, 60,000 of the succulents, that's a great one. 30,000 of the original, 70,000 of the orchid. It's unbelievable how many of these are selling. 50,000 of the bonsai tree. So there could just be way too many of these and way too many people's houses already. 76209, Thor's Hammer, four mentions, each score of two. I know I said that I'm really cooling on any interest in the superhero sets, but this is the one that I actually am interested in. It's just a really well-designed set. Great minifigure, Thor over there. Nice stand. You can take the hammer off the stand. Nice little side builds that can be fit inside the hammer. And this design is just so smooth and clean. I think it's an exceptional set. $100. We've seen it for $80, but I haven't picked any up yet because I'd really like to see it for $60, maybe even $65. And then I'd probably prospect a few of them. 75320, the Snow Trooper Battle Pack. Four mentions, E score of 1.8. I've never been excited about this one. Year and a half shelf life. The standard $20 for a battle pack with four minifigures. They look good, but the Snow Troopers just aren't as massable. People aren't building as many huge Hoth layouts as they are, like the clone scenes. But somebody recently had them for, I think, around $12. And so I ended up getting 10, even though it's a Lego product I'm not overly excited about. Now on to the Harry Potter house banners. I think this is the first Harry Potter set we've discussed in this table. Correct me if I'm wrong, but four mentions for each of them and a low enthusiasm score of 1.5. And I go against the grain on these. I think they are going to do pretty good as an investment. The $35 price point, way too high, but we've been able to pull together with deals and promos and cash back in the $20 range. And I think they even went for a little less than $20 at Target recently. A lot of people have been negative on these sets, but I like them for a few reasons. One, the nine month shelf life. Check that. Actually, it's a 10 month shelf life. The other reason is that all four of them have at least two of the three minifigures are exclusive. They all have great detail, even though it is mostly the stickers, but those are the 3D stickers. And Lego clearly put a lot of effort into the art on those stickers. Here's Slytherin. Here's Ravenclaw, my least favorite, just because there's so many anti studs on this panel and this panel. I wish Lego just filled in a little bit more detail there. And then lastly, my favorite is Hufflepuff because of the bright color and all the detail and stickers. Lego put a lot of effort into this one. The negativity towards this set is two part. Clearly, the Harry Potter Lego theme is slowly deteriorating in buzz and value and excitement. There is absolutely a secondary market cooling off on Harry Potter theme, but maybe it'll bounce back. We're starting to hear that some more Harry Potter content is at least being discussed. So hopefully in the works a few years from now. And then the other reason is because investors are pointing to these Hogwarts moments books that aren't doing that great. And I think both of those are good points, but for these banner sets, there are only four of them and they are an actual thing. In the Harry Potter movies, they hang the banners on multiple occasions and you can close these up and hang all four banners or you can open them up and have a little scene. You can hang it closed, hang it open, or you can put it on your desk or shelf and set it all up. Whereas the books aren't really a thing in the movies. Now, yes, of course, there are a lot of books used in the movies for all these different classes, but I don't think there's as much of a connection to a book that opens up into a scene to the movies as a banner that can be hung on the wall that you see all the time hung on the walls in the movies and also can open up to a great scene. Another Disney brick Head 40476. Three mentions, but a very solid enthusiasm score of 2.7. This is Daisy. She's adorable. I haven't picked any up just because I've been focused on other sets, but I think it'll be an okay one. 40521. Mini Disney, the Haunted Mansion. I am interested in this set. I have three, maybe a few more, actually. Oh, I guess it's only three. I thought I had more. But it's one that I am glad that I'm prospecting at least a few. Got them at a pretty good discount. They've been 20, 30% off at Lego even 40% off recently. And although this one doesn't look too interesting and I'm not really sure if that minifigure is anything too special, it's just a random Haunted Mansion butler. But I think since it's Disney and it is a small build and that there are multiple in this series and I am interested in at least prospecting. Here's the first one that came out in this mini scale. It's of course the classic Disney castle, but in late 2023, they came out with the mini Disney Palace of Agrabah 
And this one is super cool. Very well done. I don't think it has a minifigure though. Uh, no data on brick set. And then they just announced this one, the mini Disney Ariel's castle with the Ariel mini doll. And look at the detail of this set. So, so good. I love it. And so there's four of them. Then they also have the more expensive Peter Pan set in this scale with, I think, three minifigures. And that one's $60. Lego's already got five in this collection and hopefully they do some more. And since they're very small, but great detail and Disney themed, I think they're not getting the attention they deserve so far. And therefore I'm hoping that this one is one that people want to get because they missed it the first time by. 10255, the assembly square, three mentions, enthusiasm score 2.3. All modular buildings have done well on the secondary market. Of course, the older ones are doing very well. The more recent ones are not doing as well. Most people are still excited about this set, but I am skipping it because of this seven year shelf life. I'm worried it's going to take a pretty long time for this thing to go up in enough value that it's worth holding on to a $300 set in such a large box and then having to deal with shipping and fees and all that kind of stuff. I love the modular buildings, but again, the seven year shelf life has me out on this one. 75344 Boba Fett Starship Micro Fighter, three mentions, an e-score of 2.3. And I like this one, super small set, so... You got to turn over a bunch of them to make it worth investing. Similar to the mech, a great Boba Fett minifigure, and that'll be the selling point. But some of the micro fighters have done well in the past, and I think this one actually will do well in terms of return on investment because it is Boba Fett Slave 1. First time we've got that in micro fighter form and because the minifigure actually fits inside the micro fighter. This just announced Clone Trooper and Battle Droid Battle Pack 75372. It's coming out in early 2024. It's already getting some buzz three mentions an e-score of 2.3 me personally i'm not putting any thought into what i think about this yet because it is so new but obviously i can see why there's already buzz around it and on first glance it's pretty great that for 30 dollars we get one shock trooper three clone troopers three super battle droids and two dumb droids and some semi-decent side builds the speeder is too clunky looking looks like a very slow speeder and the new modular building 10326 the natural history museum also coming out early 2024 and also already getting some buzz. Three mentions and an e-score of two. Same as Assembly Square, $300 price point because it's this three panel instead of one standard base plate. And on first glance, I love this set. The dinosaur is great. The columns are great. I know I didn't like this color for the Haunted Mansion elevator theme park ride, but I do like the olive green on the museum. I like the banners. The tree is very nice. I love how Lego is adding some sort of foliage typically a great looking tree to all of the modular buildings now so yes it is absolutely one that i'm interested in but we have no idea how long it's going to be on the shelves for and it's definitely going to be multiple years so i'm nowhere close to focusing in on this set yet 76406 hungarian horn tailed dragon three mentions e score of 1.7 year and a half shelf life an expensive 50 dollars dumbledore's phoenix and hedwig are both 40 dollars but the phoenix is doing well so far and hedwig is expected to be very very popular on the secondary market. So I think this one is worth a look if you can get it on a really good discount. 76255, New Guardian Ship. Three mentions, only an e-score of 1.3. This set started out with a much higher e-score and month by month, it seems to be dropping rapidly. $100 for over 1,100 pieces. So seems pretty good, but maybe not a lot of plastic in the set overall. I think it's probably a little bigger than it looks like in the picture. And five minifigures, four of them are unique. And the Adam Warlock minifigure in the red with with all the gold detail and accent is awesome, but the other four minifigures all have the same torso, and that's certainly turning a lot of people away for investing, but it got all the buzz at the beginning because it came out and then it immediately went on to the Brick Fanatics retirement list, so nine months shelf life. It seems like it should do well based on that. Although I've been excited about this set, I just haven't pulled the trigger either when it's been at a very low price. Other sets that are much better for investing, in my opinion, have also been at a very low price, so I've got those instead of this one. And otherwise, if it drops to 50 bucks, I might pick up a couple. But I was really hoping that this was going to be one that I would want to get as the year closed out. And it just hasn't been the right scenario for me. And the last of the first three Star Wars dioramas, two mentions, a top score of 3.0. Not a huge sample size.
size, but it is a great set. $90, super expensive, but we have been able to get it from Walmart at a much lower price because it is a Walmart exclusive. It looks super cool. It's all messy and dirty. And when I originally saw it, I didn't like how it looked. I mean, it looks great to the scene, but just not the most pleasing to look at. But now that I see that Lego is producing more dioramas, they've got the two from the next wave that came out. They've got two more on brick set that are scheduled to come out. No pictures yet. So now we're up to seven in the series. I think this is a great piece to have and six minifigures. It says two of them are unique, but I think it's just a couple of elements. Maybe the two Stormtrooper torso costumes that Luke and Han are wearing in this scene. So the minifigures aren't that special in terms of uniqueness, but they are really good in terms of having six classic Star Wars minifigures all in one set. Here's C-3PO, fantastic with the arm printing, and then R2-D2 with the Brack printing. There you can see the front and back printing of R2-D2 again. So although these minifigures really aren't exclusive, I still think they're going to be very popular. And then the overall set is going to be hugely popular and the mechanism where all of the trash elements that are designed in there can slide right next to each other as the compactor starts to squeeze in on them. Well designed by Lego. We just talked about it. 75979 Hedwig. Two mentions. E-score of three. Even though it's going to have a three and a half year shelf life at the $40 price point, and being Barnes & Noble exclusive. Although I have not picked any up, I agree that it is going to be a good one on the secondary market. I'm just waiting to see if Barnes & Noble actually put a little discount on this one. I know you can get 10% off membership and another almost 10% using card cash and 5% with their stamps, which is all very good, but I'd love to get a 10 or 15% discount right on top of that, and then I would go get 5 or 10 of these. And I meant to say when we were talking about the trash compactor that everything else on this table either has only two mentions or down here at the bottom a bunch with one mention and so I'm not going to read off all of the mentions and e-scores for the rest of this video and I'm not even going to show all of the sets. I'm going to just kind of bounce through a few that I want to point out but skip over a lot of them. The next one that is on the table is the Horizon Forbidden West Tall Neck. Really good set. It's been on some good discounts. The Mighty Bowser, I think that's the best Mario set. Very expensive. Not retiring yet but as it gets close to a retirement date then we will be looking at that one closely. The Apollo 11 Lunar Lander, you guys know I like that one a lot. All the NASA sets seem to do well. The Modular Building Bookshop, I'm sure it'll do okay. Not one that I'm overly excited about because it's $200 for only 2,500 pieces, which is kind of light for a modular building. And then Haunted House, 10273. Two mentions and E-score, 2.5, so that's pretty high. Again, only two mentions. This is the olive green that I was talking about earlier that I don't like in this set. And some people really like this one. Other Fairground Collection sets, the Ferris wheel and merry-go-round have been excellent on the secondary market. I'm just not in on this one. 300 seems like a lot and it's kind of ugly. And the mechanism itself is hidden away in the elevator shaft. And I think a big appeal of these fairground sets is actually seeing the motion. For me, I'm out on this set. And if I'm wrong, well, I guess I missed out. Looking at Camel 3X, just recently it popped up to 397, but it's been around 370. So I'll be curious to see how high that goes but at the $300 buy-in price if it goes to 450 then maybe that's okay but that's a lot to sink into one skew and then uh, to deal with shipping and fees Donald Duck Brickheads is retiring at the end of this year Up House is one to keep an eye on as it gets closer to retirement I do want to look at 43230 the Walt Disney tribute camera just came out in September but already getting a lot of buzz $100 which to me seems fair for this set and it's really cool looking I like the film with some classic Disney scenes in Lego form <laughs> printed on there. And then these minifigures. Walt, first time we've got him. Black and white, Mickey and Minnie are new designs. And then Bambi and Dumbo. We probably won't get those again. So not only are the minifigures a great selling point, but the set itself is a nice, striking conversation piece. Although it's not close to retirement, it is absolutely one I'm going to keep an eye on. Ghost and Phantom 2, the Darth Vader mech. That's a travesty. The Stormtrooper mech is pretty awesome 76964 dinosaur fossils t-rex skull i think this looks awesome it's a little small but what i'm most excited about is that it says dinosaur fossils colon and then t-rex skull so maybe lego's gonna make a series of these and if they do then i am in if they only make one i'm not interested but if they make a series i am in coliseum galaxy explorer white house and tulips ahsoka's clone trooper battle pack daily bugle shadows escape fighter plane chase and escape from the lost tomb 
all two mentions e score of two let's take a look at tulips this is the first small and cheap botanicals collection set that is retiring and although it looks kind of plain compared to some of the others when you mix and match i think it has its place in a nice bouquet it's a ten dollar set but i wanted to point out that on camel 3x it is showing 17 and a half dollars not a lot of cold hard cash but a really good return on investment before it is even retired and then let's look at shadows escape 76995 20 dollars doesn't seem too bad you get this first time shadow minifigure from sonic and that is a cool minifigure dual molded legs the headpiece with the flared hair for speed looks fantastic the black and white accents the arm printing it'll be interesting to see if we get another shadow minifigure or if this minifigure shows up in another set but if not then this one could be a dark horse that ends up being very popular on the secondary market feel free to pause the video and look at the sets that i'm skipping on the table but now i want to go on to the modular police station 10278 one mention e score of three the cumulative table it has a lot more mentions and a pretty high enthusiasm score this one i'm excited about 200 dollars for almost 3,000 pieces so much better deal than bookshop and a kind of short three-year shelf life for a modular building 31132 viking ship and midgard serpent the obligatory Check out this set that is retiring that will go well with the new Ideas Viking Village. I talked about this extensively in a previous video and showed some pictures about how the ship really actually fits well up along the dock. It's a nice look. Obviously, we all love the Viking Village. That's one we're all going to get for our own collection and probably get some for investing. So although I like this one and I think it has a decent chance, I have not picked it up yet because the Serpent is just an annoyance to me. It's a $120 set. Take the Serpent out. Out, make it a hundred dollar set then i think that would be great we've seen it for 80 90 dollars i don't know i'd like to see it for 70 and then i'd pick a couple up probably being a little stingy there so maybe it's a set i miss out on but that's okay there will be others 21333 vincent van gogh's starry night came out in 22 no talk of a retirement date that i've seen but i just want to point this set out because unless it has a many many year shelf life i think this set will be popular for decades to come and it's one that i am watching closely and hoping to get some news on a retirement date at some point. 40619, the Wally and Eve Brickhead. And as we saw looking at the Disney Brickheads, this one I think will do really well. It's an adorable little set. 75367, also one mention in November, and it is the new UCS Venator. This one I love, and I think it is a big winner in the secondary market, even if it has a long shelf life. The detail, the proportions, the red accent colors, the accuracy it's a winner across the board and if we look at other star wars ucs ships the first copy of a ship is typically doing really well so the first x-wing fighter 1300 bucks the first tie interceptor a thousand dollars this one is fifteen hundred dollars it just goes on and on the first imperial star destroyer a thousand dollars and this is the first venator we've got in the ucs theme and i actually don't see lego making another one at this scale and so for me winner across the board but it's very early to even start picking them up we're zero five six zero professors of hogwarts this one has decent buzz probably right where it belongs but i still think it's slipping under the radar just a little bit even though the harry potter theme is decreasing in popularity at the moment these brickheads are some of the best ignoring the fact that they're harry potter when you put these next to a lot of the brickheads that have been released and remember we're up to like 200 now these ones have a lot of nice detail and design and intricate work to get the layering on the hair or the hat and head pieces so for me I like this one. And another brickhead, and this one hasn't even been released yet, but this is the Spring Festival Mickey Mouse coming out early 24. And we saw the Mickey and Minnie brickheads from the past that are doing really well on the secondary market. And this one's got some color and some stylized detail, assuming a reasonable shelf life. I think this one is a winner. And this is a funny set to point out in this video, but it's 60324, the mobile crane. Not many city sets do well, but this one I actually like. The build is fantastic it is compatible with the new roadway plates and i think not a bad price at 40 dollars because it's been standard 20 30 percent off all the time some city cranes and even technic cranes have done well in secondary market go look those up because this one i think has a small chance nightmare shark ship 71469 from the dreams line i think the dream sets overall look really good and they remind me a little bit of the elves theme and the elves theme is very popular making good money on the secondary market right now but i 
I heard that the dream show so far isn't great. I haven't seen any of it, so that would certainly hurt this theme, but I'm hoping it does okay, maybe future seasons. I still think I'm going to prospect in a few of the sets from this line, and definitely this will be one of them. I'd like to pick up at least three of this set when it is close to retirement and goes on sale. The Monkey Kid City of Lanterns. You guys know I love this set. $160 for 2,200 pieces and a ton of minifigures, some roller coaster track and roller coaster cars. It's modular, so you can redesign this a few different ways. There's just a lot of good with this set. It's a 4.4 on brick set, which is really good too. But we don't know how long it's going to be on the shelves. It's already two years, probably the end of 2024, make it a three-year shelf life. So definitely one I'm going to be watching here pretty soon, hopefully. 40426, the two-in-one Christmas wreath. Although the directions come with a few alternate builds, I am skipping out on this set. It just doesn't look that good. And the Christmas sets are not jumping up in price on the secondary market right now. That's because the previous ones really did well that a lot of people are thinking that these have a chance. And so it's oversaturated. The Technic Jeep Wrangler 42122, three-year shelf life, pretty long, $50 price point. I think it's a good price point, but I got a bunch at $25. I think I have five at $25. In fact, some people are wanting to get this one and some people are just really not paying attention to it. I think a pretty long hold time, but Jeep fans definitely go after their Jeep products. And this one looks great. I think it actually even looks more rugged and more fun to drive than the real life version that it's modeling. And of course it has steering and the winch and the great suspension. A lot of good things that make this set a winner in my opinion. And then the last two to look at on the table, 80112, the Auspicious Dragon just announced. I think this one actually looks pretty cool. Some dragons have done well and this one is unique. And I like the flow and shaping of the tan with the printed scales and then the brighter red and teal color. I think that's a nice combination and it's one I want to keep an eye on. And then let's click to the next one, which is the Family Reunion Celebration. And this one looks cool. A nice modular type building to go in with your city and to have a different type of architecture to mix up your city design. A lot of good minifigures, packed full of minifigures and details. And $130 for 1,800 pieces seems pretty good. And then if we look on the back, you can see a lot of great interior details. So I, ooh, and the golden frogs and all those green ingots to make the roof sections. So there's a lot that I think is very interesting with this set and could make it one that is desirable for city builders on the secondary market. And now let's wrap up with my top three. I hope to grab a few more of each of these before we close out 2023. And I'm totally copping out. They are all Star Wars sets. My third place is 40658, the Millennium Falcon Holiday Diorama. It's Star Wars. It's a diorama. Yes, it is sequel, but it's got a lot of stuff for that $30 price point. My second place set is 40623, the Battle of Endor Heroes Brickheads. Five characters, three first time in the Brickheads form. A nicely squared off R2-D2 with the round dish on top of the head to give you both the rounded R2-D2 feel and the squared off Brickheads feel. Feel. And the Lando and Wicket are just great. And then no surprise here, my number one is 75342, the Republic Fighter Tank. There still might be some out there at Target. I don't want to pick them up at 40 since I got a bunch at 25, but I'm going to keep a close watch and maybe I will pick up a few more of my dollar cost average buy-in price will still be very good, but it is just a fantastic set. I know some people have complained a little bit about the tank. I think it's a good compromise and looks really good, but at the end of the day, clones, 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 and that arm printing on Mace Windu, it's just a big, big winner. I'm gonna have a tough time not opening up a lot of my supply and building them myself. All right, well, if you made it this far, Thanks a lot. I know it was a long one, but as you know, I enjoy deep diving a bunch of sets. But now we're at the end, so that's a wrap, and I will see you in the next one.